942 here on the Big 550 KTRS. Last night on television, you had an opportunity to watch Gina Loudon on Wife Swap. It's garbage. It's terrible. Tonight, you have the option of watching Kim Kardashian and her sisters. Garbage, I tell you. Garbage. You're paying a lot of money to have this drivel come into your home. How about put the remote down and head over to the rep and see some great theater? Joining us now is the artistic director at the rep, Stephen Wolf. Stephen, welcome back to Big 550 hey, KTRS. good morning, McGraw. Great to be with you. You got it. Good to be with you. Double indemnity is it for the season, That's right? it. We close a week from this Sunday. This is it. Yeah. Um, we'll get to so the season here in a second, but uh, I had a chance to see Double Indemnity. I was telling you uh, uh, out in the lobby. Um, I was. It was a Friday. It was a long week. I was exhausted. I sat down, and I didn't want to fight the crowds, and I was like, oh, this is going to be, be terrible. And five minutes into it, I just felt the stress leave me, <laughs> and I sat back, and it was – it was thoroughly enjoyable. Thanks. It's just a great story. Can you commit the perfect crime with a bunch of people doing things you can't believe because you know who done it? Right. Right from the beginning, you know who's going to commit the murder. You watch the murder being done, and conversations go on with people around and say, wait, he killed them. Don't you get it? <laughs> and, and, and so you get to participate, um, and the construction of the show is quite magical, moving from scene to scene. The atmospherics, of course, they're trying to do something from film noir, you know, which is all black and white. Right. And in this play, every costume except one at the very end, it's all it's all black and white. Which, which you you're watching a live theater, and but you're watching a magic show. Yeah, exactly. When it comes right down to it, it's a magic show. It's a, it, it, it's a magic show. I mean, there's some points you I, I remember even in tech looking at the moves of the turntable saying that's really good right that's really magical uh, it when when you decided to do double indemnity yeah. ha, take me through the process once you agree to do it ha, ha, how does it come to stage well so the, the, the process was i wanted to do a mystery because our audience is like mysteries um and i think this is a fabulous story um it it came to my attention that a couple guys on the west coast had written an adaptation of double indemnity, based more on the novella than the movie. Okay. So this is so there are changes in this. If you know the movie, the the end, our ending is different. Things like that. Uh, I went to see it uh, on the West Coast, and I went to see another production on the East Coast, and and started to look at it and say there are a couple things I wanted to do. I wanted to get rid of the intermission, right? Because uh, I wanted right, I right. wanted to drive through it. Because part of the thing about noir, if you listen to it, the conversations move very very fast. And I wanted the tension line to keep going. And then we went through, I mean, Paul Short, who did the amazing set design, there were probably six or seven different designs. Right. Uh, tell the story. I don't like turntables particularly. We went through no turntables. We went through moving pallets. We went through having every set out at one time. And then he came up with the two turntable idea, and it worked brilliantly. But you, you literally transform the stage from an apartment to an office building to another apartment to a railroad depot. Yes. And a car. And, and a car. And a, and a high-speed chase almost. That's right. And the car, which is in two different positions. Right. Very fast backstage. You get that car from stage right to stage <laughs> left. You don't see that happen. Yeah, it, it was. Just, it's a lot of magic. Yeah. It's a lot of stagecraft and magic. And where do the actors come from? Uh, the actors, uh, New York, basically. So, so they come out and then read for this. They, they, they. We auditioned in New York. They came out. We re rehearsed it here. Right. Uh, and and then how much? How much? Um, uh, I guess the so so they come out here for the for the full run then. Oh, they're here for they're here for yes eight yeah. weeks yeah. And, and I I suspect the reputation of the rep is pretty good. So when you put out a call. It's it's highly desirable. Our, our reputation around the country is really strong, and right. and in New York and, and California. But I tell you, the other thing is, actors love our audiences in St. Louis. I always talk about how active the audience is; they can feel them participate in the show. Right? Yeah, it's it's really good. So you only have what another week or so left. We've got another week. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, show tonight. We've got uh, two on Saturday, five and nine seats available. Certainly at the nine, we have a matinee on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. Um, seats there, and then we're available the whole next week. It, it, you certainly have your core audience at the rep, right? Um, which is very loyal and very good. But I, I love that you're trying to reach people who wouldn't necessarily go to a play. 
uh, well, and and certainly this one is a show like that. And to look at the audience, like we were packed last night. We've been packed on this show. Uh, there's still our seats available to sell. Uh, <laughs> Got to get that in there. Now let me get on that track. Uh, and, and you say, oh, you know, I don't recognize some of the people. I know that, you know, if I'm doing the curtain speech and something gets a laugh, I think, oh, these are not the regular people. <laughs> right, right, so right. So that's great. So the information's getting out. And people, and coming to see something like Double Indemnity is ultimately, as you saw, just fun. Right, yeah. You know, it's theatrical, it's large. And people will spend a monthly stipend for their cable and watch garbage yes. and complain about the garbage they're watching. <laughs> right. Put the remote down and actually go see something of, of great Content. And come out and be with other people. You know, we're sort of like a town square. Come enjoy being with other people. You don't have to know the person you're sitting next to. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's live. It's happening right in front of you. Was Daddy Long Legs this season or last season? This season. This season. Yeah, this fall. Oh, it was probably one of the greatest plays I've ever seen. That's great. Yeah. yeah I, it surprised people because they didn't know what was coming. Uh, a lot of people knew the novel right. uh, from uh, 1912. And loved the music and loved the story of these two guys, these two, the man and woman, getting together. And the way you performed it, quickly, it's a story of uh, a, a love affair through letters. Yes, exactly. And But the way it's performed, they're reading each other's letters in yes. their own words or in their own words. Right. So, but it, it actually, at some point... I was like, they're reading text messages. In, in a way, they are, because yeah. there's there's no actual dialogue between the two of them. It is through their letters. Uh, and and um, th th there is a youthfulness to it, because it could sound creepy. Right. You know, if people remember the Fred Astaire movie with Leslie Caron, you know, this older man, this younger gal, this is different. They were rel relatively close in age. Right, yeah. While you were putting that together, yeah. did the text message world come to Never you? Never thought about it. Never the, thought the about it. The fact that you say that, it's really fascinating. So Bro. so no one else ha has brought that up you, to you? You own it. Really? Yeah. I was blown away at how phenomenal it was. I never heard of Daddy Long Legs. Right. Didn't, know was, didn't know what I was walking into. And I walked out of there spellbound because it was so... You you talk about Manti Teo falling in love with us this this sort of you know nameless faceless oh text God. lover yeah. I mean I mean that's that's it was so ridiculously good yeah and I, people would come up to me and they're just saying what you're saying and they were totally surprised small musical very tight right Paul Gordon's music was great the two performers were wonderful but the story captured them because because it, it's a terrific love story yeah all right so um you have until when to get tickets for until, double until uh next sunday next sunday and uh where Stephen wolf can we get tickets you can uh call us at 314-968-4925 the box office opens at 10 30 you can get tickets online www.repstl.org um and we have season tickets on sale for next season uh, and that you need to call the box office for. Any hints on what's coming up next season? I can. Oh, yes, lots of hints. Uh, opening with uh, Cabaret, the Candor and Ebb award winning musical. Okay, right. Then a really unique piece called Fly, which is about the Tuskegee Airmen. Okay. Uh, which is really going to be sort of special. Uh, Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap is a great whodunit for the holidays. Sure, yeah. A uh, fascinating piece called Opus, which is about a famous string quartet getting ready for a major concert. Go backstage, on stage with these people, see their artistries, great music. A uh, play called Other Desert Cities, a big hit on Broadway last year. Uh, powerful, powerhouse piece. And then Noises Off, truly one of the best farces ever written for the stage by Michael Frayn. Laugh out loud, funny. One of the uh, great resources and a St. Louis treasure, Stephen Wolf. How many years have you been doing this at the Oh, Rep? my. Uh, past 25. Past 25. He's, he stopped counting after 25. Yeah. Uh, the rep stl.org for tickets double indemnity uh one more week so yeah do don't a don't miss it it's quite special uh always a pleasure Steve thank you McGraw. the the artistic director at the rep Stephen Wolf 951 here on the big 550 KT